The first I experienced a hurricane like this. So everything me gone and never saved nothing. But eventually we hollowed the wet clothes there. We sunned off, make them dry. And also we got something to put back way back. You know, and then um, we did a shelter till to the end. Human service, they call. They talk to we bring them. And they interview we and they check up the house and things. But then we don't want the school. They never want me to come back, but we may have to come back. We're still staying at the whole house. You know, we stay in the rain, call wet way up, we sleep with the star, get up with the sun, sleep with the rain, get up with the sun. Women are more likely than men to be affected by extreme weather events. UN stats show that 80% of people displaced by climate change are women. And some of the most vulnerable women come from poor and rural communities. But what we've been hearing is that women are the ones that are disproportionately affected, whether that's as a consequence of working in agriculture, um, their small holdings, their market gardens are wiped away, their livelihoods wiped away by these storms. Or in the aftermath of those storms, women being called upon to do the bulk of the clearing up, the caring for people that have been injured, picking up the pieces of families that have been torn apart by these devastating uh, climatic events. Many women who face higher risks when responding to natural disasters and who bear greater burden from the impacts of climate change live in the Caribbean. Women remain more vulnerable than men in times of extreme weather events like floods, droughts and hurricanes. Panos Caribbean is using its position to highlight the challenges women face because of gender roles. At COP24, Panos introduced testimonials to shine a light on this inequality to spur action with the message, climate change is a gender issue. Women are responsible for taking care of the home. If you have an extreme weather event and you are going to be put out of water or electricity for weeks, and you are the sole adult in your household responsible for the children, I ask you to imagine what it must be like. Hurricanes or droughts, women have the responsibility and sometimes it becomes a burden to look after children. And therefore, her own safety and security is a bit compromised if she's the only one responsible for herself and others. If that woman is a single income earner, then when there is a period of extreme weather, then the small resources that she does have, she has to work magic to continue to take care of the families. If there is a flood or a hurricane and food is reduced or lost, by and large, women are responsible for feeding the children. Um, so she has a differential role to play. And so now it is more important than ever to empower women to make sure that they can not just survive, but thrive in a world with a rapidly changing climate. Because they're most dependent on resources like land and water, women must be equipped to find and be a part of the solution to the growing threats to their homes and communities. Since last year's COP, a roadmap to incorporate gender equality and women's empowerment in climate change discussions and actions, was adopted. And today, as Gender Day at COP24 was observed, one of the leading voices of civil society, the Commonwealth Foundation, points out the need for diversity in gender perspectives at these discussions. And what we want to do at the Commonwealth Foundation is encourage and support a discussion amongst Caribbean civil society organizations on the ways in which women are adversely affected by the impacts of climate change. But for us, when we talk about gender, it's not just about men and women. It's about the ways in which women, women with disabilities, for example, are doubly impacted, the way in which poorer women are doubly impacted, the way in which indigenous women are doubly impacted by the ways in which climate change impacts on gender. And so women leaders in the Caribbean believe that all women across roles must be empowered with the skills and resources and be included at all levels of decision and policy making processes when it comes to climate change. It does mean that if those women's concerns, their gender concerns and their gender needs are not properly and adequate, adequately addressed, 
what we're looking at is intergenerational poverty. And to correct that, the status of women, the role that women can play, the uh, policies on climate change, uh, an important corrective to the system is to include women in decision making. It becomes really, really important when you are making policy and when you are crafting public policy to ensure that agenda lens is placed on these policies. Reporting for News 5, I'm Andrea Polanco.